The White House today made public an internal review summarizing the 2021 U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. The report included the bombing at Kabul Airport's Abbey Gate, which killed 13 U.S. service members. This report, which was long anticipated, repeatedly blamed the Trump administration for the chaotic withdrawal, noting that Mr. Trump agreed to a withdrawal date and started drawing down troops, but did not provide the Biden team with an actual withdrawal plan during the presidential transition. Joining us now to discuss this report further is CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe and CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland. Ed, I'm going to start with you because it's pretty clear what the main point was that they were trying to make here. It's in paragraph two of the unclassified summary that we received. It says, quote, President Biden's choices for how do we execute the withdrawal were severely constrained by conditions created by his predecessor. In other words, as John Kirby put it, the previous administration tied our hands. So it took them almost two years to draw that conclusion. Did they take any responsibility or acknowledge any mistakes made by the Biden administration? The word mistake appears once in this 12-page report, uh, Nancy, uh, noting that um, when, in, in essence, recounting that strike that occurred in central Kabul that was intended to kill an ISIS-K operative and ended up killing 10 civilians. They say, quote, to counter the perceived immediate threat, the U.S. military launched a drone strike in Kabul that mistakenly killed 10 civilians. Among the causes of this tragic error was that the high-risk and dynamic threat environment led the team to inaccurately assess that the target had posed an imminent threat to those on the ground. That's the one time we see the word mistake uh, on an incident in all of this that, of course, has been well-documented and for which the U.S. has apologized before. But it spends three and a half pages laying it out and saying it's the Trump administration's fault for negotiating with the Taliban, for inviting them to Camp David, for withdrawing U.S. forces to, a, to such a level that you would have had to send more in rather than keep it at those numbers, and for not allowing the, United, the Biden administration to see those plans during that botched transition, you'll recall, in late 2020, when the Biden transition teams were trying to get information from agencies and the Trump administration was blocking them from doing so. But this is, they called it, or National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said they were going to do a hot wash, which is a fancy bureaucratic term for a deep dive into what went wrong. This 12-page document is a whitewash. There is, <laughs> it, it is narrative, it is light on specifics, uh, it's devoid of citations, and it is, in essence, uh, their version of events as the classified reports conducted by the State Department and the Pentagon are being sent to lawmakers on the relevant committees for their full review, White House saying it will not release those classified reports to the general public, although inevitably details of those reports likely will ultimately somehow get out there in the public sphere. We'll wait and see how it went. And we've been waiting for this report and asking about this report for months and months. And so I want to ask you, Ed, about the timing of this release on Passover before the Easter weekend. That's something that you touched on in this very pointed question to White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby. So let's take a listen to that. Why today? And is this all we get? And is this a response to the studies that were done by the agencies? Or is this considered a summary? Of this is the result of months and months of work by individual agencies who are participating in the withdrawal to voluntarily review that withdrawal, which they did. Um, and uh, they worked through that. Uh, these, are, uh, these documents are classified. Um, and we felt it was the responsible thing to do after those reviews were done to then run a process across the administration to take a look at those reviews ourselves across the interagency, uh, work our way through it, uh, and then provide them to the relevant committees and leaders uh, uh, on the Hill, which we did today. We think that was the responsible thing to do. And what you're seeing today is the result and the culmination of an awful lot of work, Ed. No uh, effort here to try to obfuscate or try to bury something. It's an effort to try to be as open, as transparent as we can be. So, Ed, he said that if, uh, if you weren't going to bury something, you wouldn't release it uh, right before a holiday weekend. He says, no burying here. What'd you make of that? Well, and it's, this is the definition of a news dump. Uh, it, 
Viewers of this program may be familiar with that great show, The West Wing, on which everyone compares presidencies now. And there was this great episode about taking out the trash day. When you try to release information and news that you don't want to get wider attention, you do it on a Friday or you do it ahead of a holiday weekend. This is that. The other thing they did this afternoon, for example, is the Education Department releasing a proposed change in Title IX policy regarding transgender athletes that in essence will allow some school districts across the country to ban transgender athletes against the wishes and the whims of supporters of this administration. So another piece of trash taken out today by the White House, as they might describe it in raw communication strategy sense. Uh, this is not something that the White House is eager to remind people about. The withdrawal from Afghanistan, that deadly day at the airport when 13 U.S. service members were killed, the chaos that was seen on television is arguably the lowest point the biggest mistake or stumble of this administration. And so while they want to try to claim that they were doing this voluntarily and that they released it today, releasing it during a holiday week and spring break season, mm -hmm. and doing it knowing that Congress was going to do it for them if they didn't, uh, you know, is, is uh, too cute by half, perhaps. And, Scott, it also did not go unnoticed that they released this report during a congressional recess. So there's no one on Capitol Hill to read the classified version of the report. In fact, the chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee is in China, on the other side of the world. He was probably asleep when this report came out. Uh, we have the first reaction from Chairman McCall, who called Kirby's comments, quote, insulting and disgusting. What was he referring to, and what else is he saying? Yeah, he was referring to Admiral Kirby's statement as disgraceful and insulting that he was trying to ascribe blame to the previous administration for what happened during the withdrawal. Um, but I think you put your finger on it. You have a double-decker bus of criticism incoming from Congress because there's a policy difference the Republicans in Congress have had with the administration over this. But now they have a process complaint, too. That's where the double-decker comes from. And you know Congress is always at its most unbridled and unambiguous when it is firing back about process issues. They don't believe they're getting the information they've been entitled to at the timing of their choosing. What Chairman McCall also said today, in addition to calling um, Kirby's statements disgraceful, was that he believes it was his request for information, his forceful request for information about the Afghan withdrawal that led the White House to release this at all. Timing is not going to be um, unnoted. By people here in Congress that this happens when they are not here, when they're decentralized. But the House Oversight Committee has already announced, Nancy, an April 19th hearing into this. This committee, the House Oversight Committee, generally has oversight over the entirety of the federal government. So they have some small piece of this. They will not be the last panel to request testimony and have an investigative hearing about this matter. Right. And Republicans have been saying, even before they got the gavel, that they were going to be doing a deep dive into the chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. So what are they going to do with this report? And, and how does this report feed into the partisan back and forth over this two-year-old withdrawal? At first, they've got to read it, and that's no small matter. It's quite clear to me members of Congress have not gotten through this thing yet because we haven't heard granular criticisms of what's inside, just the same summary that's been released to others. Um, how does this infuse the debate? Well, let's look first of all at who gets called to testify. The first hearing that's been put on the books immediately at the House Oversight Committee is really just talking to a special inspector general who has long tracked Afghanistan and U.S. efforts there not a key player in the decision-making from the Biden administration. Let's see who gets called next, which players in which decisions are called to testify before Congress, because that might direct how the U.S. House responds and ultimately even how the Democratic-led U.S. Senate responds. Well, it's a, a document that's fascinating for what it doesn't include as much as what it doesn't, uh, as much as what it does, rather. Uh, Ed O'Keefe and Scott McFarland, thank you so much for breaking it down for us today.